Hello, I'm Bob Dickman, an executive coach and co-author of the book Elements of Persuasion. The leadership lesson from film we'll be exploring in this episode is how losing one's personal boundaries can erode judgment. We'll be looking at a situation I was involved in in 1987 in the film Walker, starring Ed Harris, set in the 1850s Central American nation of Nicaragua. In that film, Ed Harris plays the historic figure and American adventurer William Walker, who with a small band of mercenaries installed himself as the country's president until he was assassinated. The film was shot on location in Managua, which at the time was ironically at war with rebels and mercenaries. Although the film was set in the 19th century, it used 20th century anachronisms to tell its story, such as Zippo lighters, helicopters, and even my own acting role playing a CIA agent. What is your nationality, sir? William Walker, President of the Republic of Nicaragua. I'm sorry, sir. I had never been in a country at war before, but what lured me into this strange world of fact and fiction was an opportunity to act with the brilliant Ed Harris. There's an old acting cliche, I die for the part. Well, as it turned out, that cliche was almost prophetic. My character was to exit from a huge Soviet helicopter that had been in actual combat that day. The film crew understood that under no circumstances was this copter to lift off during filming. There were strong, unpredictable trade winds that made a night takeoff extremely dangerous. I asked our savvy assistant director, Mary Ellen Wood, to bring our yawning helicopter pilot some food and strong coffee. She smiled and said, good idea. Somehow as we began filming, the pilot never got the no takeoff message. No one told him we were pretending the next thing I realized, we were in the air and the copter was being buffeted by heavy winds, pushing us dangerously close to the surrounding buildings. The tremendous downdraft generated by the copter blades made all the staged explosions below burn with uncontrollable fury. I remember looking down and seeing actors and crew running for their lives. They sensed we could easily take them with us if we crashed. Suddenly, I saw Mary Ellen Wood courageously run towards the helicopter. She made eye contact with the pilot and instructed him to land immediately, which he did with some difficulty. Once on the ground, the director of photography ran towards us and began screaming at Mary Ellen, saying that she ruined the shot by running into the frame. He looked at me and said, we have to do it again. Like a zombie caught in a bad dream, I started to board. I thought, I mustn't disappoint the crew. Reflecting back on this incident, I realized that at that moment, I had lost all sense of personal boundaries. I was too identified with my role and more afraid of disappointing my cast and crew than I was in anyone's safety, including my own. As a leader, what kind of followers are you trying to develop? Have you ever felt that your organization was asking you to collapse your boundaries in order to get the job done? Have you ever pushed against a leader's need for more of your time and effort? Were you punished? Here's my takeaway. Leaders have more power to influence than they realize. For the leader, get back on the helicopter sounds like a suggestion. To the follower, it sounds like a command. In healthy teams, boundaries and expectations are visible discussed openly and questioned. In an unhealthy organization, questioning a leader's authority is relegated to the bathroom, elevator, or late at night in the parking lot. If you're a leader, take a moment. Put yourself in the shoes of your followers. From that perspective, would you follow the leader's advice? Thanks for watching, and please click on the subscribe button of this channel.